I'm the Bill Harbert project manager for the project known as Vesta. We are building a uh, three building project that uh, for us lasts about 18 months. We started in August of 2017 and right now our completion date is February of 2019. Basically we got a year from now to turn over the tower portion of our scope of work and the parking deck complete. And then Cortland Partners, who is the other part of our relationship out here, they've got the mid-rise building that they're taking from the caissons that we installed all the way through the finishes. I am a superintendent, job site superintendent for BL Harbors. This is the Vesta project, and we are in week number 42, and we are still in the caisson business, drilling caissons, which is lasting probably twice as long as first anticipated. I guess the biggest challenges that we've had is uh, the amount of rock that we're uh, finding that the geotech report did not show all of in. Uh, I'm Cody Jennings uh, with Russo Corporation. Uh, our particular aspect of this project is to put in the uh, drill shafts, which is the major foundation for larger structures. Uh, we've been here for about six months putting in our, our drill shafts. Drill shaft is also called a drill pier. Uh, if you think of like a uh, pier that a boat pulls up to, it's the same principle, except we make ours out of concrete. Uh, basically, we start off with uh, a giant drill bit. That's basically what we do. And we drill into the uh, dirt. And uh, as we go down, as the material becomes unstable due to water or soil conditions, we'll put a giant uh, caisson in there, which is a pipe. Uh, everybody's been working together well. It's been a challenging project due to the uh, change in the geology of the, of the pad. We went from some easy drilling to some pretty difficult drilling, uh, which has uh, impacts on schedule and of course cost. On a good day uh, it, with these deeper shafts, we can get one to two a day uh, with going down to 70 feet. If we have to use the wet method with uh, using a pump truck that we have here, it can take some time. Drill shafts are the unsung hero of the uh, project because Without our drill shafts, without our foundation, you know, nothing else can be put on top of it. So it's uh, it's it's a critical factor, and it and and folks don't ever see it, but they'll know it's there when the when the building stays put. On a tight job like this, usually we're the first ones to come in, so we have you know uh, a whole lot of room. But as you see, we've we finished the tower, and uh, the other contractors are in there putting the tower on top of our foundation, and so we have to move to other portions of the job. Well, there's only so much space on the site, and as more and more subcontractors come in, it gets tighter and tighter with our material. Everything that you see from the wall line over here to the west is everything that has to do with the caissons. It's, well, that's just it. It's hard, it's hard to overcome that, but you have to work with the situation that they're in because it is a bunch of unforeseen rock below ground. We just have to, uh, have to work together. So my title is project engineer. Uh, basically that's a little bit of everything. Um, kind of like an assistant superintendent at times. At times I'm, you know, I'm unloading trucks. Today I'll be doing a little bit of layout with my robotic total station. I've got to, I've got to raise my stuff on the rope because uh, for the for safety we can't break three points of contact on the ladder and. Um, they did have a rope that went from one to three, but it looks like somebody took that up, so this is a, a rinse and repeat deal. Now that we got all the way up here, we've got to go all the way back down there where the uh, orange triangle is. So I climb back, back down. Going on the fourth floor, that's where we had some post tension cables to break. And uh, it's, it's a real issue when that happens because it slows the job down. It's very costly to repair. And uh, it all boils down to uh, when the concrete was being placed. It was not vibrated properly around the post-tensioning heads. Hey, man! Can we come through? All right, all right. 
This is the dead end of the post-tensioning cable that I was talking about. If it's vibrated well, it stays in place and we pull the, pull the cable, no problem. Concrete was not vibrated around this one well. It started to move, broke this top ear off of this dead end. It broke this top ear off, which caused it to go down, which put the cable in a bind, therefore breaking the cable. You see right up here, you stand right around this side, and you can see the other head that's up there that's still in place. That cable still has tension on it. We're about to look, put, get the tension off of it so we can replace the head, which that one is broke in the same manner that this one is broke in. And you see that we had to chip out all the concrete around it, which is very time consuming, very labor intensive to be able to make a repair. Flow of a project is important because you line up materials and uh, equipment and flow of work that goes from one stage to the next. And what this tensioning problem has caused us is to break our flow. Right now we're on a cycle where we're pouring a slab about every five to seven days. And so material from one pour has to go to the other one or it goes up to get ready for another pour. And so what this has done is it slowed us down to where we don't have the material that we would take from the bottom of the four floor slab and reuse it elsewhere in preparing to pour the first pour of the fifth floor. BR549, sorry, did I mess you up? 63249, are you on the mid-rise or are you in the tower? I could be in. Where are you? <laughs>
the big part of the meeting today was to sit down with a key contractor, Cortland Services, who's got a lot of scope of work and say, can we compress, can we condense, can we overlap your scope of work so that we can better refine our plan to tell the owner how we're gonna finish the project. We are excited about what we're doing. Um, we've had a lot of weather here lately. I mean, it, it rained a lot this winter so far. We can't control that. We can't control the impact that those weather days have on us, but what we can control is do we have the right plan? Do we have the right logic? Are the event, are the activities sequenced in the right way? Do we have manpower lined up so that when we do hopefully get out of the weather months, that we can go fast? So we've got the right people that's making the right plans. We can get this thing done on time.